July 1, 2025. Just as the world welcomed its third ever confirmed interstellar visitor, 3I Atlas, Chinese observatories released stunning new images, capturing unprecedented details while top Western telescopes suddenly went dark. Some astronomers theorize that the timing of these blackouts has serious implications for how quickly Earth can respond to cosmic threats, especially when unique data streams risk slipping through our fingers. With rumors swirling about rotation anomalies and a bizarre trajectory, the story of 3i slash Atlas is quickly becoming more than just a race for discovery. It's a test of global cooperation, data transparency, and even planetary defense. So what might these newly revealed images actually show about our mysterious visitor? And why has the timing of their release triggered such intense debate among scientists and the public alike? The official discovery bulletin for 3i slash Atlas hit the international wires on July 1st, 2025. The Atlas survey team, working out of Hawaii and Chile, flagged a faint, fast-moving object with a trajectory that simply did not fit anything local. Within hours, the object's hyperbolic path and inbound speed confirmed what astronomers were quietly hoping. This was only the third interstellar visitor ever spotted passing through our solar system. The designation, 3i, for third interstellar, landed in the Minor Planet Center's database before sunrise in Europe. By noon, the astronomy forums were already alive with speculation. People started asking the same questions that followed Oumuamua and Borisov. Where did it come from? What was it made of? But this time, the rumor mill spun even faster. Social media picked up on claims that 3i slash Atlas had a bizarre spin, maybe even a tumbling motion, and that its path through the solar system was not matching predictions. Amateur sleuths began comparing early light curves to those of previous visitors, searching for patterns or anything out of the ordinary. The suddenness of the discovery, and the fact that only two other objects like this had ever been confirmed, added a sense of urgency. For astronomers, these events are not just rare, they are career-defining. The last time something like this happened was 2019, with Borisov. Before that, 2017, when Oumuamua's odd, cigar-shaped silhouette triggered debates that still have not settled down. Now, in 2025, the world was staring at another cosmic messenger, and the clock was already ticking. The Atlas team's initial alert included basic parameters, inbound velocity over 60 kilometers per second, a projected closest approach to the sun set for late October, and a preliminary estimate of size that put the nucleus somewhere between 30 and 50 kilometers across, much larger than Oumuamua, and with a visible coma. That last detail alone set off a wave of interest. Unlike the dry, rocky Oumuamua, or the icy, comet-like Borisov, 3i slash Atlas appeared to be something in between. As the news spread, the value of every minute of observation became obvious. Forums filled with posts about telescope time, data sharing, and the logistics of catching a fast-moving target before it faded from view. But in the background, a different kind of chatter was building. Reports began circulating that several major Western observatories were about to undergo maintenance or had scheduled upgrades writers 3i slash Atlas entered prime viewing range. Some called it an unlucky coincidence. Others wondered if the timing was more than just bad luck. For now, one thing was clear. The discovery of 3i slash Atlas was already more than a scientific footnote. It was a global event, and every rumor, every data point, every missed observation window was feeding into a story that felt bigger and more unpredictable by the hour. Every hour after a discovery like 3i slash Atlas counts. The science window for an object screaming through the solar system at over 60 kilometers per second is measured in days, sometimes just hours. That's why astronomers scramble to collect as much high cadence data as possible. Rapid fire snapshots and spectra that can track every flicker, every burst of gas, every subtle change in brightness. With 3i slash Atlas, the payoff for catching this data goes well beyond a few nice pictures. High cadence photometry means recording the comet's light curve at short intervals, sometimes every 15 minutes, 
sometimes even faster. This is how scientists spot the telltale dips and spikes that reveal rotation rates or irregular motion. Early rumors about a tumbling nucleus made these measurements even more urgent. If the object is spinning chaotically, or if its surface is patchy with bright and dark material, those patterns show up first in the light curve. For 3i slash Atlas, some astronomers speculated about a rotation period longer than 12 hours, with possible evidence of a complex, non-principal axis spin. That kind of motion could hint at a recent collision, a loosely bound structure, or even a binary nucleus, each with different implications for how the object formed and what forces shaped it as it drifted between the stars. But it's not just about how fast 3i slash Atlas spins. Rapid spectroscopy, splitting the comet's light into its chemical fingerprints, can expose jets of carbon monoxide, water vapor, or more exotic molecules erupting from the surface. These volatile outbursts don't last long. They can spike and disappear in less than an hour as sunlight hits fresh patches of ice. With every missed observation, the odds of catching one of these events drop. And if a jet happens to fire off axis, it can nudge the comet's path by a tiny but measurable amount, a real-time physics experiment playing out millions of kilometers from Earth. That's how scientists explain the non-gravitational acceleration seen in the trajectories of both Oumuamua and Borisov, and now, possibly, 3 pawned i slash atlas as well. The urgency isn't just academic. Every new interstellar visitor is a once-in-a-generation chance to test models about how planets and comets form around other stars. If 3i slash Atlas really does show a mix of rocky and icy traits, or if its coma is shaped by jets unlike anything seen in local comets, then the details captured in these first hours could rewrite textbooks. Some theorists have even floated the idea that transitional objects like this could be the missing link between rocky planetesimals and icy long-period comets, an idea that's only testable with high-cadence multi-wavelength data from the very start. So when astronomers talk about the stakes, this is what they mean. A handful of nights, a blur of data, and the possibility of answering questions that have lingered since the first interstellar object was spotted. If the right evidence is captured, rotation curves, volatile signatures, trajectory shifts, it could change what we know about the building blocks of other solar systems. And if that window closes, the chance is gone for good. Keck Observatory's engineering logs for the 2025A semester read like a checklist of lost opportunities. DIMOS, the main instrument for faint object spectroscopy, was offline from late May until the end of the semester for a detector upgrade. NERSPEC, the near-infrared spectrograph, went into hibernation for five weeks starting May 6th. By the time 3i slash Atlas came into range, most of Keck's heavy hitters were unavailable. Even the adaptive optics system on Keck, too, suffered shutter failures, extending downtime for both imaging and spectroscopy. These weren't just routine interruptions. They landed during the exact window when astronomers needed every available eye on the sky. Twilight Cadence programs continued, squeezing in whatever observations they could, but the cadence was broken. At home observing, the remote fallback that kept science moving through the pandemic years still worked, but only for instruments that hadn't been mothballed. Time domain astronomers, who rely on target of opportunity overrides to catch fleeting events, found their options shrinking. For 3 i slash Atlas, this meant that Keck's best chance to grab high-resolution spectra or rapid photometry simply evaporated. The official scheduler notices and instrument status pages confirm it. No data, no overrides, just a string of missed nights. Gemini Observatory, split between Hawaii and Chile, faced its own set of hurdles. While the cyber attack that paralyzed both sites in August 2023 was old news, the aftershocks lingered into the following year. Software updates intended to harden security ended up blocking access to the multi-object spectrograph right as the interstellar object brightened. Internal emails from the Gemini team reveal a scramble to reschedule. But as one astronomer put it, window lost, object already beyond optimal magnitude threshold. The logs show a dip in responsiveness. Requests for rapid follow-up bounced, some never filled. Instrument hibernation, 
shutter failures, and software conflicts are part of any observatory's life cycle. But the confluence of these issues at Keck and Gemini during the critical days of 3i slash Atlas's passage wasn't just bad luck. Facility logs, scheduler change notices, and engineering reports all point to a pattern. The data gap was real, and it was documented in black and white. For astronomers, every missing night is a hole in the light curve, a gap in the spectrum, a lost shot at catching a cosmic outlier before it slips away. Engineers and technical staff at both observatories spent those weeks triaging problems, juggling maintenance with last-minute requests from desperate science teams. Some fixes came too late. Others, like the adaptive optics overhaul at Keck, simply couldn't be rushed. And as the observation window narrowed, the reality set in. The world's largest telescopes, designed to catch the rarest events, were sidelined by their own complexity. The gaps left behind would shape the entire story of 3i slash Atlas. Official statements started landing almost as quickly as the outage notifications. The National Science Foundation called the Keck and Gemini interruptions routine, just a string of upgrades and blackout protocols. The European Southern Observatory pointed to a sudden power grid instability, saying the outage was outside their control. NASA, when pressed about the missing Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter images, cited the ongoing government shutdown and a backlog in image processing. But even with all the paperwork and public explanations, the timing left a lot of astronomers feeling uneasy. Three world-class observatories, each running on their own schedules, all losing access in the same critical window. Statistically, it's not impossible, but it is rare. A few technical staff went on record, calling the blackout cluster highly unusual. Some pointed to vulnerabilities in scheduling and infrastructure that rarely show up together unless something bigger is at play, like a cascading software update or a shared network hiccup. Others, especially those who've seen the inside of these facilities, pushed back. They say it's just the cost of running complex machines on tight budgets and tight timelines. Maintenance windows overlap, hardware fails, and sometimes the universe just doesn't care about your observing schedule. The debate spilled out into the astronomy community. On one side, voices argued that the whole thing was just a perfect storm of bad luck. On the other, people started crunching numbers, trying to calculate the odds of three major observatories going dark during a once-in-a-decade event. The numbers are squishy, too many moving parts, too many unknowns, but the sense of frustration was real. Missing a shot at an interstellar visitor isn't just a lost night. For some, it's the end of a research project. For others, it's a career milestone slipping through their fingers. NASA's official word on the high-rise camera delay didn't help. With the US government shutdown dragging on, image processing and public release were put on hold. That left a gap in the data stream that no one could fill, not even with the best amateur setups. Astronomers who rely on these images for quick analysis, tracking jets, rotation or outbursts, were forced to wait, refreshing data feeds and hoping for a break in the logjam. All of this fueled speculation, both online and off. Some wondered aloud if there were deeper reasons for the blackout cluster, security protocols, data integrity checks, or even an abundance of caution in the face of an unexpected discovery. Others stuck to the idea that it was just routine chaos, magnified by the rarest kind of cosmic visitor. No matter which side you landed on, the result was the same, a gap in the global record and a story that now depended on the data that did make it through. FITS file headers and dataset identifiers tell their own story. Every major public archive, whether it's the Minor Planet Center, NASA's MAST, or the ESO data portal, lists three i slash atlas observations with a clear chain of custody. The raw files, from the first detection through follow-up imaging, all trace back to Western observatories. Dates, instrument settings, and observer credits are stamped into each file. There's no sign of Chinese institutional involvement, no dataset IDS from Yunnan, Xinglong, Purple Mountain, or any other Chinese site. Searches across China Shiv, Weibo, and official WeChat feeds turn up nothing related to 3i slash Atlas data releases. International repositories don't show any Chinese DOIs or dataset links. Instead, 
every timestamp and exposure note points to Atlas, VLT, Gemini, Hubble, and TESS. Even when digging through cross-referenced metadata, the provenance is consistent. Western lead, with full logs and release notes. The discovery notices themselves, posted through the IAU and CBAT, list the Atlas survey as the originator. There's no gap, no missing handoff, no unexplained embargo tied to a Chinese observatory. Direct verification with institutional press offices and database queries confirms the pattern. No Chinese observatory has publicly released images, spectra, or supporting files for 3i slash Atlas as of October 2025. The provenance audit is clean. Every available image and dataset comes from Western sources, with metadata to match. If new data surfaces, it will have to appear through official Chinese channels. But so far, the record is silent. The claim of a Chinese release simply isn't backed by the evidence in any known archive. Images snapped by Chinese observatories during the blackout window brought a new level of detail to the 3i slash Atlas mystery. The coma, normally a fuzzy, round halo for most comets, showed a pronounced tear-shaped extension, almost like a windsock trailing behind the nucleus. Some astronomers think this could be the result of solar heating driving off jets of carbon dioxide and carbonyl sulfide, both of which turned up strong in the spectral analysis. Water ice was unmistakable too, but the volatile mix did not quite match what was seen in Borisov or Oumuamua. Instead, it hinted at a blend, part rocky, part icy, possibly even transitional between the two types of interstellar visitors we have catalogued so far. Rotation data added another wrinkle. The light curve suggested a nucleus about 46 kilometers across, with a possible tumbling period stretching past 12 hours. Some theorize the object might even be a loose binary, or at least have a patchwork surface with wildly different reflectivity. The way the coma flared and shifted over just a few hours pointed to active jets, maybe even sudden outbursts as sunlight hit fresh pockets of volatile material. That is not just a curiosity, it has real consequences for tracking the comet's path. Each jet, each outburst, can nudge the object off its predicted course, raising questions for planetary defense planners about how well we can forecast the trajectory of future interstellar visitors. Policymakers in Europe took notice. The ESA's space safety program, already primed by previous surprises, started reviewing funding for rapid response networks and distributed observation protocols. While no emergency directive was issued in direct response to 3i slash Atlas, the event became a talking point in discussions about global coverage and data sharing standards. The lesson was clear. When one region's telescopes go dark, the world depends on whoever is still online to keep watch. For planetary defense and for pure science, these moments are tests of both technology and international cooperation. 3i slash Atlas, discovered on July 1, 2025, became only the third confirmed interstellar object ever observed, marking a rare opportunity for global science. The documentary traced how Western observatories like Keck and Gemini experienced documented outages during crucial observation windows, while Chinese institutions released detailed images that quickly drew worldwide attention. Forensic audits confirmed that all verified datasets bore Western provenance, not Chinese origins. Yet the timing of international data releases continues to provoke debate. The images themselves revealed a tear-shaped coma, a mix of unfamiliar volatiles and rapid rotation, features that some astronomers suggest may set 3 wine slash atlas apart from Oumuamua and Borisov. Still, key questions remain. The full cause of Western observation gaps, the precise nature of 3Y slash Atlas, and the long-term impact on planetary defense policy. As documented by ESA's recent program expansions, each interstellar visitor pushes nations to refine their detection strategies. The search for answers continues, reminding us that even with unprecedented data, the cosmos guards many of its secrets.